what they're measuring is your ability to organize and manage. Because you have to do that as an attorney. It's nothing fancy. You got to be able to organize and manage. And the most common way we do that, you know, is, is with a calendar and witnesses. I, you know, again, there's nothing fancy about it, but you got to be able to do it. So analytical is here. Now this is entirely deductive. So now we have a clearer sense of what that means. And it's mimicking law school. In other words, uh, some of law school will also be deductive. Uh, much of legal reasoning is deductive, that is to say circumstantial. Um, so, what they've done is they're going to they're force you to learn something that's foreign, right? That's what they're doing. So analytical is foreign to everyone. They force you to learn something that's foreign because that's what law school is. You, you, it's a bunch of foreign stuff. You haven't had it before. It's hard. Generally, it's not well written, and you got to get your arms around it. If you can't do that, you can't be a lawyer. Do you get that? You guys, you guys want to be lawyers, right? So uh, what am I missing here? You're not going to be able to wrap your arms around pretty complicated stuff and explain it to your client. You're not going to be a lawyer. That's okay. You know, but preferably we'll be lawyers. So what I've done here is I'm just taking out examples. When I say they're testing your ability to organize, implicit in that statement is they have to let you organize. They have to let you organize. It can't be just these things can't be random, dropping out of the blue. And they're not. They're so not. Uh, analytical is so predictable. So what I'm going to do is touch on four examples to show you how it works, right? So the first example I'm going to show you is to organize by order. Now all you do, in terms of organizing, you're either organizing by order, by assignment, meaning you're assigning traits to individuals or colors to cars, but it's just, but you're assigning. All right, so you're, you're ordering, you're assigning, or they have this third thing where it's a pure conditional. That's a, uh, a, an, an if-then universe, and we'll touch on that, but not, not today. We'll, but we, we, we'll, we'll do more than touch on it, we'll cover it. But that's not today. Today is, what are you going, what are you likely to see in your test? You are overwhelmingly likely to see order, and assignment. So I've selected a few of these to show you, well, what does that mean? So if you, in your book, if you turn to uh, exam 61, that should be the last exam. I don't have the page number. So exam 61, section three. I'm sorry, what was the last? Uh, I know you said we're not only going to touch on a little bit, but you said organized by order assignment. What was the last? Uh, pure, pure conditional, pure conditional. which is an if-then universe, oh, okay. which again is very, very foreign. So it's got to be learned by almost everybody, including by people who take formal logics. So I'm looking at, uh, well, I'm directing you to exam 61, section 3, questions 18 through 23. Three five one, page three hundred and fifty one. Now let's we'll start with some basics here. Is it fair to say everybody's looking at exam sixty one that it's an actual LSAT and that everything in the volume you have are actual LSATs? Yes. So nobody's making anything up. Is it fair to say some people had to take this on the test? Yes. Right. And just just so relaxed. Just analytical is just easy. Does it? You'll get it if God's going to let you get it and you work hard. You'll get it. God's not going to let you get it. Oh, hello. <laughs> but, but you don't have to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? You don't. You, 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 you just you just need to go to law school. So, uh, Terrence, would you mind? To, would you sure. give this a read? <clears throat> From the first through the seventh of the next month, seven nurses, F, G, H, J, K. L and M. I'm sorry. F G H J K L mm -hmm. M. Okay. 
will each conduct one information session at a community center. Each nurse's session will fall on a different day. The nurse's schedule is governed by the following constraints. Okay, so here's the deal. We're at the colon, is that correct? Yes, sir. You're going to read to the colon and you're going to stop. You're just going to be a machine. Just do what I say. You'll be fine. All right. Just get to the colon, come to a dead stop. What they're testing you on here, again, is the statutory language above the colon. So this seems very clear. This seems to be the case that each of these nurses gets assigned exactly once, one per day. Seven nurses, seven days. Yes? So it's hugs. Now, do you get that the people who are uh, creating this could allow multiple nurses to be there on any given day? They could preclude nurses from being there on any given day. That's really what you're reading for. Going right back to what we just did in logical reasoning, right? You're changing the way you read. You're reading statutorily. It's nothing fancy, but it's written statutorily, so you have to read it statutorily. So you see this, and it's like hugs, seven days, seven nurses, one each day. They use the word schedule. And again, on the most basic level, do you understand that I have to order witnesses? Do you understand that the calendar I use in my office has seven days? You know, like, hello, right? So that's all this is. you got to be able to do it. Now, you get to the colon, right? Doesn't seem to be any stumbling blocks here. All I want you to do is now list the constraints, right? So we're going to take them one by one, just list the constraints. So, Terrence, what's my first constraint? At least two of the other nurses' sessions must fall in between H session and M session. Okay. Statutory. H. <coughs> Space, space, I'll put a plus sign there, M. I'm going to box this, and I'm going to put an arc over that. Now, I'm going to underline the H, I'm going to line the M, and I'm going to tell you what I just did. <clears throat> Analytical is a statute and then a bunch of constraints on the statute, and that's the way law works. You get the, the initial statute here, say, out of court statement or if to prove the truth of the matter asserted, inadmissible in court. Followed by the word accept, and I think there are 20 some odd exceptions to the hearsay rule. That's what analytical is doing. It's mimicking statutory construction and then the, the imposition of constraints on the language, right? That's it. That's all it's doing. You gotta be able to lose a lawyer. So you need to be precise. Now, Jim would have pointed out last week, do you notice how they say H has to be separated by at least two places from M, right? And you're in a rush because, well, you're, you know, that's what you guys do. You're going to stop doing it, right? But do you see if you were in a rush, you might fail to put that little arc over there saying those are reversible. Isn't it fair to say that M could be two spaces or more to the uh, left of H? Mm -hmm. it's that, that's what you're being tested on. I, I, I don't know what else to say. You want to be lawyers, right? That's what people pay me to do, right? Just be precise, right? You got to have a plan. Plan's got to make sense. It may mean you're not going to do all four hypotheticals. You may do three hypotheticals. We'll figure it out. No issue to reach right now. So you're going to represent the constraint. You're going to make sure you didn't screw it up. And you're going to underline, this is very important, underline the characters. Because when you underline them, you're really saying they are more powerful than ones that are not underlined. They're like clues, pieces of evidence. Okay. My next, next constraint. G session must be on the day before K's. So G and K are consecutive. I notice they didn't say consecutive. They said G is on the day before K, which is going to allow somebody who overthinks this to put a space in between the G and the K. Right? They're just consecutive. Everybody agree? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's how long it takes to do it, right? Underline the G and K, next constraint. J session must be on a later day than M's. J is later than M? Yes. So it's MJ. Again, you see how they reverse the language, all right? So it's M, J. Underline the M, underline the J, and you see the difference, right? The, the constraints keep getting repeated. So 
So the constraints we're working on now are the constraints that are going to appear on your test. It's, a, it, it's all out there. Okay, next. F session must be on an earlier day than K's, but on a later day than, F, than L's. So did I get L, F, K? Yes. Everybody agree? Because again, I'm not, I'm not looking, so I'm at a disadvantage here because I'm, I'm not using a sense of sight. Is that correct, that it's L, F, K? Underline the L, underline the F, underline the K. Okay, next. L cannot conduct the session on the second day. Okay, and L is not two. On okay. the second month, I'm sorry, this is months. Okay. And so I'm just saying that L is not two. That's a two with a slash through it. Uh, and is 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 that, is that the final constraint? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> so, is there anything I've done right now that's a mystery? Nobody okay with this? Talk to me. Yeah. Uh, the lines underneath those, um, exactly what do they mean? Are they just how many times it's been a constraint on them? I'm saying on Oh, up here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sorry, your name is? Dennis. I'm sorry? Dennis. Dennis. Yeah, that, this, this is telling you ultimately these are tools and how you're going to organize your information. The greater the number of constraints on the letter, the more information you're given about that letter, right? So um, I look at this, and the skill is this is not being given to you in order. Uh, is it fair to say if, if, you, if you get a table in the mail, if you're, if you're, not the mail, if you have a table, <laughs> This will happen to you if you live to be 60. Um, is, it, is it fair to say that you may order a table and you need to assemble it? Yes. And is it fair to say you expect the table will come with instructions? Yes. And is it fair to say you anticipate following the numbered instructions in order to successfully build the table? Yes. And is it fair to say that's pretty much commonplace in life? Yes. But we do things in order, right? Yeah. All right. Forget it for this test. So this is not being given, I mean, it could be, it could be random, right? This is not being given to you in order. So the skill here, carefully get the constraints, and now you gotta weave them together. You've got, what we have is information, and the information has to become intelligence. You guys wanna be lawyers. That's what we do, all right? Okay, here's the goal, you ready? Every single hypothetical you'll get in analytical. The goal is to create, you may want to call it, a, you're going to create a statute. You're going to do it when we're talking about order and we're talking about assignment, which is what we're talking about here, order, right? Hypotheticals. So you're either going to, you're going to look to trifurcate, bifurcate, or in, 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 depending on the circumstances, you may have to go to four hypotheticals. But goal is you will use hypothetical to organize and then manage the information. Kabi, you got to buy into this. You got to go in there and say, what am I trying to accomplish, right? What I am trying to accomplish is to assemble, to reassemble this information. The threads become the fabric, right? And what I'm looking to is I want to see, preferably, two or three hypotheticals. So how have they given me the opportunity to create hypotheticals? Now, sometimes they'll say, well, they might say that K is either the third or the fifth nurse. Well, wouldn't that, wouldn't you, don't you see the two hypotheticals? Yeah. Right, K3 and one. K5 and the other, and you're off to the races, right? Well, they used to be that friendly. They're really less friendly now, right? They're now requiring you to see the hypotheticals from this information. And it's there. It's there. You're looking at it, all right? And so you say, okay, is there a character sufficiently constricted, right, 
that I can narrow its placements preferably to two or three positions. Kabish? Everybody get that's the goal, right? You see how K, L, and M have more constraints, right? Okay. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to marshal my evidence. The first thing I'm going to do is where elements can be combined, I'm going to combine the elements. Now, does everybody agree that, that if I combine the second constraint with the fourth constraint, I come up with a new constraint? Yes. Okay, meaning this becomes L, F, G, K, doesn't it? So first that for first you're doing is can I assemble? It's it's so order driven. It's so it's so logical. All right. So this becomes all right. This is L F G K. Does everybody agree? We have taken the second constraint and we have now woven it together with the fourth constraint. Talk to me. Yes. We, but we didn't start with the first constraint, go to the second constraint, go to the third constraint, go to the fourth. That's not what a lawyer does. <laughs> Un unless that's what I'm supposed to do. Right. All right. Oh, okay. All right. And then I'm looking over here at HM, which is not part of this, right? Okay. I just want to see if there's more assembling to do. MJ, and that's not there, you see? Those letters aren't implicated. L2 is implicated, yes? Meaning L cannot be 2. So I'm going to put this here. Okay. Now, who can tell me, is there a way to create two or three hypotheticals based on this information? In other words, what you're trying to do is find one nurse, right? You're scheduling the nurses, right? And you're saying, is there one nurse I know has to start on one of two days, or months, whatever they are, one of three days. And Joanna, who did you have over there? L can only be one, um, three, and four. Now, Joanna says that Nurse L can only be scheduled, and are they months, Terrence? Yes, sir. Joanna says that Nurse L can only be scheduled for the first month, for the third month, or for the fourth month. Uh, do you guys agree? Talk to me. Yes. Days. Days. Days of the month. Okay, so days then. <coughs> Terrence, stop that. I know. <laughs> okay, do you see it? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. But that's what you're getting tested on. It's, it really is, can you see that? Can you see it? Talk to me if you can't see it. I don't think I should see it. You don't see it? Okay, and I'm sorry, your name is? Celine. 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 All right, Celine, we're going to see it. All right, we're going to make it. Celine, you know what they're doing? They are requiring you to learn something that you haven't learned before that comes from out of the blue, right? Which is what civil procedure is going to do. It's going to come out of the blue. Like, God help me. All right. Celine, is it fair to say with respect to the letter L that at least three characters have to come after the letter L? Mm -hmm. And we started with seven, yes? Yes. So isn't it fair to say L cannot be in seven, six, or five? Yes? Mm -hmm. Haven't we been told that L cannot be in two? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that leave one, three, and four <coughs> left? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that allow us to create three universes with L at one, L at three, and L at four? Talk to me. Yes. yes. That's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. All right? So now, so, oh, all right. And just follow the bloody evidence. Don't jump ahead. Just follow the evidence. Does everybody see what we've done and why we've done it? Yes. Yeah. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. L1, L3, L4, we'll number them. Yes, talk to me, see it. This is the tool, the primary tool you're going to use on the test. They're going to allow you to do this 
in most hypotheticals, not in all hypotheticals. The ones that you can't do this will be rules driven or the pure conditionals. The, uh, they've got to allow you to organize. So now, is everybody okay with L? So let me just follow through the real. I'll take questions after I'm done. Does everybody see what I've done with L? Yes, sir. Now you want to be lawyers, right? Yes. yes. You're going to follow the evidence, right? Yes. Relentlessly. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is now that I've gone from my marshalling of my evidence to the organization of my evidence, I want to bring everybody into play. So I'm going to bring in over here, I've got to keep my eye on this. And I've got to keep my eye on MJ. So you bring the MJ over. No, because I don't know where the M is. And I'll just, Terrence just said, can you attach the MJ? And my response is, no. Because to attach the J to the M would require you to show this in both forms. And what's happening here is such a great test. You got to organize and manage. You get, this is the organizational part. So we're going to complete the organizational part and then we're still going to have to manage. So now you take each hypothetical, right? Just be relentless. Would it be fair to say, you see my eye goes down to this bottom hypothetical because when I go down to the bottom hypothetical, doesn't it allow me to place F, G, and K? Yeah. You guys see it? Mm -hmm. And when I place F, G, and K, don't I violate this constraint? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. There's no way to be in compliance with the law in the third hypothetical. You with me? Nope. They knew that. So if you wanted to do this, you get what happened. You're going you're gonna to be so fluent in this, right? You're going to be, they're going to hire you to create future analytical reasoning <laughs> questions. It's so cool. Which of the following must be false? Do you see the question coming up? Tell me what must be false. Just based on this, what must be false? L is 4. How cool would it feel if you took this test and one of the questions was, which of the following must be false? And it said L is 4. Would that not give you some evidence that this organizational framework was productive? Talk to me. Yes. Yes. Didn't the people who created this test have to organize the information? Yes. Didn't they have to manage it? Yes. Aren't they looking for you to emulate what they've done? Yes. Don't you think you're going to have to organize and manage as a lawyer? Yes. Can't make this stuff up. So, goodbye. That's gone, right? Okay. Now remember, organize is different from manage. Let's go, my eye now goes up to the middle, to now what is the bottom hypothetical. Is it fair to say that if L is 3, F, G, and K have to be in that string after L. Yes. Yes. Everybody get it? But we don't exactly know where F goes. We don't exactly know where G or K goes. But they have to be in that string. Yes? yes? yes. Aren't we narrowing the scope when we do that? Yes. That's how you solve the case. So this becomes F, G, K. Now you stay here, right? And you say, well, who do I not have accounted for? H and M. That's why you put everything here, right? So it becomes visual, so you don't lose track of stuff. Okay. Is it fair to say that either H or M, so start with the first premise, right? Is it fair to say that H and M have to be split apart? Yes. One of them's got to be over here. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, right? Yes. The other's got to be somewhere over there. Yes. And just to clarify, when I put the plus in there, for me, that doesn't mean there have to be more than two spaces. It means there could be two or more. So you'll you'll just you'll need a way to, to organize this stuff. Okay. Now, don't we know something more about this than other than, other than that H and M have to be separated by more than two spots? What else do we know? J's got to come after M. 
Ooh. Let's see. Well, what would happen if we put M over here with F, G, and K? What would happen? Talk to me. Yell at me. Right. There would be no room for J. M doesn't... Right? If M goes here, where, where do you put J? Off the board. And since M cannot go there, where does M have to go? And since M goes there, where does H have to go? Okay. Off the board. Well, well, H has got to go to the other side, right? Yes. And therefore, where does J have to go? Second spot. Second spot. It's relentless reasoning. You with me? There is no trick. These are not games. This is, you want to solve homicides, I have solved homicides. This is the reasoning you use. It's an unusual application, I grant you. It's the reasoning. It's taking information and turning it into intelligence. Nothing fancy about it. Does everybody see what we just did? Right? So you go step by step, you say, all right, I got this. You keep this so you can see it, right? I start off with H and M have to be separate. So I know one of them's got to be here, right? So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I can't, if I, if I put M over here, I got no place for the J, therefore M is either one or two, right? And must be one because J's got to come after him. M, J, and then H, I'm just going to box over here. Isn't it fair to say H could be in one of the four slots over there? Maybe it probably can't separate G and K, so I got to make sure I don't screw that up, right? But do you see that H is going to float on that side again, consistent with you can't put H in six, right? Because if you see what would happen to G and K, right? Be no room. You guys see it? Talk to me. So it's this vision that you're going to develop over time. There is no trick. And then you come to the top one, right? And you're just doing the same thing. You say, all right, this has got to be F, GK. I've got to get H and M and keep them apart. And I've got to have MJ. And this is the management part. That's all you can do. Do you see that part of this is organization? Yes? Yeah. But you have to do more than organize. You have to manage. So they're not going to let you put every pigeon in a hole. This is the management part. Would it be fair to say there's a lot more management on the top hypothetical than on the bottom hypothetical? And there's no management on the third hypothetical. And this is very, very common. Okay, now what you do is you say, I, I want an issue that's straightforward. Do not take this test in, in the, I mean, you can always, when the first question begins with the word which, you can simply answer it on the constraints. So, I'm not gonna, you know, we'll turn our attention to that later on, but, but what I wanna do here is, I wanna validate this, right? So I want you to look for a question, not by its number, but by the way the issue is framed. So is there an issue that asks you what must be true, what must be false? You want something categorical, preferably with additional information. Preferably with additional, and preferably with concrete. Like the real question you want is, if F is third, which of the five must be true? If, if G is fifth, which of the five must be true? You want concrete information, and you want an imperative. You want to be... 22. So, I'm sorry, Molina, you said? You could do 20 or 22. All right, what's 22 say? Let's try 22. Why don't you read that out for me? It says, if G session is on the fifth, then which one of the following must be true? Okay, so hang on. All you do now... Now, this never changes. On your test, right? This is in heavy black pencil. The information for each question goes in, and then when you're done, you erase it. So, they want G to be fifth? Yes. Okay. So does everybody agree? Bless you. 
that if G were fifth, you'd have G, K, F, and H. Now here's the deal. It says must be true. So there are two possibilities here. One possibility is they're not going to make you do any work up here. That's one possibility. One possibility is they are going to make you do more work up here. Right? I don't want to do the work if I don't have to. So I'm going to look at the answer choices, right? If there's only one that must be true, then I'm out of here. Because there's only one that must be true. And is there one that must be true? Yeah. And what does it say? It says H session is on the seven. H is seven. Good night, lights out. Got to go now. And just out of curiosity, what does uh, what does twenty three say? Light L session could be which one of the following days? Oh, there's there's one that's gonna that's gonna be impossible, <laughs> right? So now, if this is valid, I mean, how foolish am I gonna look if? We look at the individual questions and this fails to resolve them. So we don't need the answer choice. They said, they said, what did they say about L? L could be on which one of the following days? How stupid is that? It's either one or three, and it's certainly not both, because then you'd have two credited answers. Talk to me. Is it there? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you infer what about the validity of this as a process initially? Does this appear to produce credited outcomes? Yes. Isn't it possible that the people who create this do this, that this is what they do? Something very much like this. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, I try. So I was a little concerned. I was like, wow, look at how much time and effort you have to put into answering the first question. But you really need to dedicate most of your time to the first question because the other ones kind of come a little bit quicker. That organization is really, is that, is that typical of most of the sections? Like you see how the first one, you really have to do all this organizing and managing. And then after that, they're kind of like, this cannot be true. So you kind of have all the framework there. You're just pointing it out. Well, when you're referring to the first question, are you referring to the first question of a given set? Yeah, given set, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. First question of a given set, typically, three out of four, typically, will be what is referred to as the orientation or the rules question. You don't need to organize to answer that. All you need to answer the rules question is, are the individual constraints? And then you do have to use the process of elimination on that, yeah. right? Yeah, so you actually don't need any of this. You can, as you're setting this information, as you're preparing this information and organizing it, you can answer the first question so long as it begins with the word which, yeah. even prior to doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, but once that's out of the way, they're still going to make you work. The test is designed to produce a 59. You know, it is, it is, it, they're going to make you work. But would you prefer to work with a tool that you have confidence in that is valid, or shall I just go show you tricks? Or, there are no tricks. <coughs> Does this make sense? All right, so I offered this as, do you see how this is just order, right? There's no assignment, we're not, you know, uh, the nurses don't have day or night shifts. The nurses are not men or women. The nurses don't wear three different types of uniforms. You get, when you're in that world, that's, you're also now assigning an attribute to something else. Kabish? Yes. Okay, so that's that. Now let's move from one that's not simply order, Come on, isn't this exciting? <laughs> come on, come on. Okay, now let's look at one where you're ordering and assigning. Okay, so we went from order. And the way I'm going to do this is the first one is order, right? The second one is going to be mostly order, but definitely assignment. The third one's going to be mostly assignment, but some order. And the last one's going to be all assignment. And that's probably three of the four hypotheticals that will be on your test. And, and then during the week, I know you're all excited to get home and, and, and open up the assignment page on the, uh, on the website, but I haven't written anything there yet. So, so you have to wait till I get home and, 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 and I got to go out to Toro tomorrow, so may, maybe Monday, but, but it'll be up by Monday. But, but it'll be, take your time, do nothing under time conditions, right? Learn to reason this way. Don't you get, once you learn to reason this way, the hypotheticals simply happen? 
But they're just hypotheticals. They're reflecting, can you reason this way? I mean, if you can, who cares what the hypothetical is? Ah, I mock them. Actually, I don't. I respect them immensely. Okay. Okay, so that was order. Now let's try. A little order and assignment. This is on exam 53, so that's way in the front. Uh, exam 53, section 2. Questions 12 through 17. This is a classic. Everybody there? Exam 53, section 2, questions 12 through 17. But Danian, would you be good enough to read this? On a field trip to the Museum of Natural History, each of the six children, J.K.L. I don't think you're right. Page 54. Page 54. Danian. Oh. <laughs> it hurts when you do that. Uh -huh. And, and there I am putting it up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Apologies, everyone. That's right, all right. We still love you. Don't worry about it. What do you got? Okay. Detective in investigates the citywide increase of burglaries. Question exactly seven suspects. S, T, V, W, X, and Y. And Z, sorry. <coughs> Each on a different one of seven consecutive days. Each suspect was questioned exactly once. Any suspect who confesses gets a wise question. The, investiga in the, the investigation confirmed to the, to the following. Okay, now, we just finished with the nurses, right? Talk to me. Yes. yes. Because these are all the same. And is it fair to say with the nurses, there are also seven. Yes. They're also going one at a time. Yes. And here we have seven what, what are suspects. suspects. And they're all going one at a time. Yes? yes? Is it fair to say there is a difference in that here we are told the suspects either conf some suspects confess. Yes? Yes. yes? Well, if some suspects confess, what do other suspects do? Yes. Welcome to law school. So do you see, this has an whatever word you want to use. You're assigning or attributing, right? right? Some of these people confess, some don't confess, and you're going to get tested on that, right? So I don't know. How about this? Gosh, that will mean you confessed. This will mean, well, you didn't confess. How's that? How's that for a keen legal mind in a very, it's, it's, it's almost Kantian, it's so deep. Right? Now, again, bifurcate, trifurcate, yes? It's all about the hype. Every exam you will take in your first year of law school will be a hypothetical testing you on the same principles that those who went before you were tested on. Your contracts exam is going to be my contracts exam in 1983. Person has to know, do you understand what an offer is, what consideration is, what acceptance is. They have to use a different means to achieve that end, right? So your hypothetical is not the same hypothetical. Don't you get it? This entire test is a bunch of hypotheticals designed to see whether or not you can reason this way. It's, it's, hug them. You see them on the street. You hug them. They got their LSAC shirt on. You hug. <laughs> now I'm ready. So now I just want my constraints. Oh, okay, constraints. Yay. T was questioned on D3. Okay, so we have T3. The suspect questioned on Hang D3. on, hang on. Hang Sorry. On. That's okay. <laughs> uh, well, I'm actually going to cross T out because we know where T is. What's right. next? The, question, the suspect questioned on D4 did not confess. Now you see, that is the assignment or the attribute part of it, right? That's not the order part of it. I mean, there's order in that the, it takes place on day four. 
but when you say confess, don't confess, that's an attribute that's given to a suspect. So on day four, person does not confess. Is that correct? Okay, who's next? That's what's questioned after W was questioned. Okay. And again, you see that W, you know what, you, you, if you're in a rush, you may mess it up, but you're not going to mess it up. You're not going to be in a rush. You're going to be thinking like lawyers. So did I get this right, WS? Yes, correct. And now I want to underline the W. Again, be clinical, 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 clinical. Okay, what's next? Both X and V were questioned after the Z was questioned. So I'm going to have Z preceding X or v. and V. Let me box that. Let me underline that. I'll show you how I'm notating it. Z, V, X. Again, careful, careful, careful. So all this notation means to me, you can notate this any old way you want. It's just got to be accurate, right? But that says to me, like, with seven suspects, Danny, doesn't that say Z cannot be sixth or seventh? Correct. Does everybody agree? Yeah. That's just, I don't know where X and V are going, but they're going after Z. And is it fair to say neither V or X could be the first suspect? Yeah. Yes. And, and so that's not a very strong, you know, that's not a very strong constraint, but it's going to get woven into the other stuff, and then we'll see. Okay, next. No suspect confess after W was questioned. All right, now we got to slow down, right? Statutory construction. No suspect confessed. Hang on. No suspect confessed after W was questioned. So, so we're going to get W, and when we get W, we get all non-confessions. Now let's, 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 how do you do this in a rush? Do you get, it's the precision with language. So let me just make sure I got it, bless you. I, I got to make sure I got it right, right? I believe what I heard was that no suspect confesses once W is interviewed. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So I would, on the test, I'd say, all right, time out here. Let me get this, right? No suspect confessed. That's why I created this, right? Those are the folks who didn't confess. So when I get to W, that's they all have to be in that category because none of them confessed. Yes? Yes. Don't you see what they're testing for? You want me to draft language on your behalf. You want me to draft language uh, that persuades a court that that my adversary doesn't pick up on. Do you get this as whether this would be a lawyer? Yeah. You know, so, okay. Uh, so, W. Next. I just have a quick question. No, oh, yeah, Tim. Going back to um, the one before that, both X and V, would you put like that little arch over X next to X and V because it doesn't matter to you either? No, I wouldn't because I'm using the arc to say things are reversible. Okay. Or it's, when you go back to the, to the prior hypothetical, it was H and some other letter, right? Yeah, H, H and but F. but H and their F. positions could have been reversed. Okay. So this is simply a statement that both X and V will come at some time after Z, okay. but I don't know where, okay. and I don't need to know where. Okay. Terrence? The other part is that they don't have any relationship to each other. We don't. Right. Yeah, that's correct. For sure, Terrence. Yes, they don't have any relationship to one another. X and V, that is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Right. Uh, so finally, exactly two, sus two suspects confessed after T was questioned. Okay. So now we get T, and you see, you just you got to go slow. Yeah. Again, and you got to have a plan. So your plan may be, you know what, it's easier to go slow when you're doing three hypotheticals instead of four. So you'll have to make those choices. Okay, so I'm going to get T. And then what is it? Two suspects. Exactly, so T. And then exactly.
So I'm going to make a, I'm going to draw two C's there. <coughs> So that's just, I'm just saying that's all right. When I see T, I don't know what T does, but once I see T, is it fair to say that exactly two of these suspects will give statements? Yeah. And is that the last constraint? Yes. Why did you take the two away? Oh, um, it, it would be fine to leave it there, because that says to me two. In other words, the two little C's means exactly two little C's. <laughs> But you could put the two in and then see there. It's just a different way of saying it. Okay. And here we are, right? So first you say, all right, let me let me marshal my evidence, right? And do you see the T and the W are your leads here, right? Okay. Um, is it fair to say that? we can put that T on three and there's really no risk there. Yes? yes. Well, you get really, really concrete information, right? Don't be afraid to use it. Because it's gonna lead to other stuff. So I'm just gonna go like this. Well, why would you be afraid to put T there? It says put T there. I'm sorry? Why would you be afraid to put T there? No, I'm saying don't be afraid oh, to put yeah. T there. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm saying where they give you really concrete information, take advantage of it. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, let me get through. I mean, unless you have a question about that. I mean, T is three, yes? Is it fair to say that four does not confess? Yes. And that's very concrete, right? Yes. Not requiring any interpretation, is it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the numbers down here to leave space. And do you see how the organization is developing? Where now I have a place to uh, put in the information about the uh, suspect. I have a different place to put in information about the status of that suspect. And I have yet a third place to keep my eye on the day of which the suspect is doing this. Well, isn't that something you would need to do as an attorney? It's not TV. Nobody is testing to see if you can give a closing statement. Nobody, you get that? Nobody's testing that. Most attorneys can't. Most attorneys never have. Most attorneys never will. Most attorneys will never set foot in a courtroom unless they're in the, they're getting, you know, they're in a divorce case and they're, they're, they're a part of the case. You know, nobody is testing you for specific ability in the profession. They're testing you for the common ability we all have, which is to be precise. Okay. So now I have done the first constraint in the second. So this, you know, I did this in order, but now I'm saying, all right, you know, do you see how that line, I have the T crossed out and there's that line there, right? Yes. You're following leads. These are your leads, right? There's no exact order you have to proceed in. So, so don't think, oh, I might have gone to a different, that's fine. In other words, I, I can only do what my brain directs me to do, right? But you don't have to follow step by step what I'm doing to get this right. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. You simply have to follow steps that produce valid outcomes. So I'm looking at this, and this is it. You get information turning into intelligence. Mm -hmm. How many people are taking this test, not doing this at all, or, or doing it, but they're not paying any attention to it? You know, they're saying, ah, well, that's not where you will be. Okay, T, exactly two people confess after T. Does everybody agree with me that five, six, and seven contain exactly two confessions? Yes. yes. And exactly one non-confession? Yes. Everybody? Now, you notice how you're all agreeing with me. No, does it, no? No. And, I'm sorry, what is your name? Koshi. I'm sorry? Koshi. Koshi? Yes. Okay, Koshi, why not? Um, I don't see why, well, it has to be five, six, or seven that are confessions, but I don't see why one of them can't be 
Okay, well, let's go to the language. Koshi, would it be fair to say this said exactly two people confess after T confesses? Yes. Okay. And would it be fair to say exactly two means exactly two? Yes. And is it fair to say there are three slots available here? Yes. And therefore, is it fair to deduce from that that one of those three slots will involve somebody who does not confess? Yes, but why? Oh, okay. I have a. There's any other reason why? Because I'm looking at W and it says everything after W. I, 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 I you're jumping ahead. All, all I'm looking at here is this constraint, right? You, you look at, you pick the constraint and you apply it. We'll work into that final constraint. We'll get there, right? But is it fair to say the application of this constraint to this law, which is what we're doing, right? It's not logic games. It's the application of a given constraint to a given statute. The application of that means two of these three people must confess. And one will not confess. That's it. So you you got to be step by step. You got to be... I'm not saying you want to try cases, I'm not saying you want to do what I've done, but do you understand that you, you, when you're in this field, you go step by step, you can afford no missteps, right, and you're going to crush whatever's in your way. You with me? Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, if you think you're going to get this overnight, well, most people are not going to get it overnight. Uh, you know, unless I can show you tricks, but I'm telling you I can't show you tricks. So, it's precision. And it's the discipline to say, I'm not jumping the shark. I'm saying, whoa, 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 let me apply this constraint, then I'm going to keep working. So this constraint tells me, here, I've got two confessions, but I don't know where they go. Now, I've taken a piece of evidence, I've worked it into my case, so that's gone. Now, since I've, this is accounted for, this is accounted for, this is accounted for, and I'm saying, well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Once I place, uh, when I get suspect W in there, isn't it fair to say that there are no confessions? Yes. That once I get W in there, that's it, they're all shutting up. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Well, if two people have to confess here, well, wouldn't it be fair to say W cannot come before here? Yes. Yes. Well, where the hell does W have to be? Six. Six. It has to be six. Well, it could be, you, but for an additional constraint, it could be seven, right? Yes. In other words, if you just looked at this constraint, mm -hmm. W could be six or seven, yes? Correct. But then we have this constraint, which looks remarkably like the constraint we had in the hypothetical we just completed, yes. where the J was coming after the M, but we didn't know where the M was. Do you see it? Yes. Yeah. It's so cool. Right? You've got to train your mind. As you sit here now, you say, my God, how would there ever be enough time? Well, this I'll tell you, the test is not designed to be completed, for sure. But the second thing is, if you don't train your mind to see this way, how will you ever increase its speed? You won't. So don't worry about how many of these you get done. The only thing you can control, right, that brain's a muscle. All you can control is working it out. God will take care of the rest. So does everybody agree with me, W's got to be the 6, S has got to be the 7, yeah. and S what? Yes. Yes. Bingo. Yes. How, this is Socratic, you get this method where you engage with me, where I don't stand up here and just, you know, I want you to believe what I believe. We're human beings, we're human beings, right? I want you to kneel at the altar of my philosophy, fuck me. How about, how about you learn the reason for yourself, and how about anybody who, want, who wants you to genuflect at the altar of whatever it is they say, you learn to question that person. This is just, here's W, here's S. Everybody agree five and six both confess. Correct, right, right, yes. Yeah. Are we still, are we at this moment still organizing? Yes. yes. But we're going to have to manage. They're not going to let you do this without managing. Oh, okay. So, 
what do we have left? So we've got Z, X, and V, right? Yeah. Oh, we're going to get there. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 we'll get there. You see, everybody see we got Z, X, and V, yes? yes. So you're going to bring it over so it becomes visual. Oh, okay. So I need Z. I'll put it over here on the side. <laughs> Oh, okay. And isn't it fair to say now you look up there and say, oh, that Y, there are no, there are no constraints on that Y. You see how there's no line under that Y? Oh, frisky. So Y gets boxed. And Y can be anywhere. So here's what you've been, now didn't we do this on one hypothetical? We didn't have to bifurcate, we didn't have to trifurcate, didn't we organize? So it's not all that common. They let you organize in one, one, one framework. They did here, wireframe. Uh, well, what are they going to ask you? Well, they're going to reward you for doing this, right? Okay? Okay? The could be true questions will have to do with Z, X, Y, and V, because they could be true, right? Could it be true that uh, uh, Z is 2? Could that be true? Yeah. Yeah. Could it be true that Z is four? No. no. That's what they're gonna do. Could it be true that Y is five? Yes. Right. And here's so so. How about this? Because we're gonna create questions. That's what you want to do, rather than sit there like like dope saying, "Oh, I want to see how many I can get in 35 minutes." Why don't you see how long it is before you can actually mimic the mind of the people who do this, right? And you say, you know what would be a great question? Well, I want to ask you, you know, I'm doing it on that test. I'm going to say, if y is 5, which is fine, must be true. And now you're going to tell me the answer. If y is 5, which is fine, must be true. Z is 1. Bingo. Z is 1. You guys see it? Yeah. Ah. Oh. So now we look for... Uh, uh, you guys tell me, you got an entry question there? Just something that's, you know, you, get, you don't want to... Must be true. Well, preferably, again, what you're looking for here is the, you want something, preferably gives you concrete information and says what must be true. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm not looking at anything, so... Okay, what does 17 say? And, and do you see how that, though, is not as concrete as I would like? If neither X nor V confesses, is that what they're saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go with it, but that's... What you're trying to do is limit your analysis time, particularly on the entry question, right? In analytical, this is the law. So if we're back to IRAC, right? That's the law. What analytical is doing... The issue is what we're dealing with now. What analytical they're requiring you to do is build the law, the rules of the law. That's what this is, this is the law. If you don't have a robust law and you would try to apply an issue to it, what's going to happen to your analysis? You get it? It's all IRAC. The whole bloody thing is IRAC, right? Hey, you, you try not having this and getting them right, and all of a sudden you have no law to apply the issue to. So what I'm looking for here is an issue that's going to require minimal analysis, right? So ideally that would be a question that says uh, if y is, well it's one I just gave, right? Like, like if, 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 if y is the fifth uh, suspect interviewed, which of the following must be true? Do you see how that comes together in your mind? That's what you're looking for. So is there one like that or no? We'll just do the... Uh, no, 13. 13. 13. Okay, what does 13 say? If Z was the second suspect to confess, then each of the following statements could be true. Except yeah, and again, I wouldn't get... And again, you'll get, you'll get to feel this. But to say if, if V is the second suspect to confess, now they're requiring you to weave together V's relationship with Z as well as to figure out where is the second confession being given? So it's not where I want to be. We can do it, but, but I'm, I'm seeing analysis there. 
Yes. I would extend to a local 14. Oh, what does 14 say? If Y was questioned after B, but before X, then which one of the Yeah, they're, they're just not giving you a lot. They're, they're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know what? Forget all that. What's the second question in the set? 13. I don't know, I'm looking at whatever the second question is. Unless the first question is not a rules question. The first question is a rules question? Yeah. Just one, just one, a following could be true. No, that's not a rules question. So that's fine. Which one of the following could be true is fine. What does it say? Which one of the following could be true is the question. Yeah. Well, we got to read the answer. Oh. Uh, <laughs> X wins question on day one. No. No, I said, it's stupid. Right? It's stupid. So you say stupid during the test. It's stupid. What does B say? V was questioned on day two. Yeah, I got a donut. Good night. That's the answer. And that's it. That's the answer. It, this is deductive. This is, must be true. Does everybody agree V can be second? Yes. So um, why are you looking at CD in it? That's what that does. Right? And yeah, when you don't, and this is actually a great example. There are just sometimes they're not going to give you the issue I want them to give you, right? Which is some real concrete information and what must be, right? So then don't worry about it. Then you know what? Which is fine, could be it's, true. There is a must be, I think. There was 17. Yeah. Well, but it, percent, it, it depends what information precedes it. So it's not just must be. The information, if the information that precedes it is ambiguous, if it's requiring us to weave together, like what is the must be true? Which one of the following suspects must have been questioned before T was questioned? Oh, no, that one's fine. Who's got to be question before T is question? And the answer is going to be what? Z. Z. Oh, stupid. Do you see it? So yeah, no, no, that, that was, but again, I don't, you don't want to make this, I'm just trying to, you don't want to lose time trying to, you know, cherry pick out the question, right? But what you definitely want to do in the beginning, this is, in analytical, the time is spent here. You're investing your time in creating a law, right? This is a law. That's not true in logical reasoning. In logical reasoning, your time is involved in the analysis, right? Here, what you'll be rewarded for, what you're being rewarded, is this. How is this not, is this answering stuff or am I just like senile or both? But is this answering stuff? Yeah, right. Do you get what's going on? Didn't we create the law? That which governs the application of, of the individual issues, right? So the analysis is de minimis because we have the law so long as you pick an issue that's not going to kill you, right? Logical reasoning, no. They give you the law. The law is the argument, right? That's the law. They give you the issue. There's no, there's no problem with that. But in logical, don't you have to throw your head back and do analysis? And what does analysis take? Time. And what don't you have? Time. Time. So you've got to make it a recognition test, meaning you've got to go in there and say, well, they are limited in what they can test you for. But to make it a recognition test, wouldn't it be fair to say you have to prepare? So what trick do I have? I got none. Trick is go out and, 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 and learn how to reason. I mean, why avoid it? I mean, if you can do it now, why not embrace it now? You want to do lawyers, right? And if you don't want to do it, then you shouldn't do it. That's fine. Just don't do it. It's hard work. If you want to watch TV, go watch TV. But it's probably not a typical outlet for an attorney. I wouldn't know what to do. I mean, I, I, you know, I close. Okay. Yes, we have two hypotheticals under our belt. Talk to me. Come on. Yes, There's some yes. All right. So do you get this was order, but driven here by whatever word you want to use, right? Attribution, assignment. We had a characteristic that had to be applied. <coughs> All right, let's try. I have next here, where we switch from, I had that as order and assignment, this will be assignment and order. Uh, so how about exam 53, 
section two. Uh, questions 18 through 23. I'm sorry? Next page. Oh, okay. Next page, I'm told, on information and belief. All right. So we're on exam 53, section 2, questions 18 through 23. Yes? All right. Dennis in the front, would you mind giving us a read? That is correct. The three highest highest placing teams in high school state <coughs> tournament are the teams from F, G, and H high schools. Each team has exactly two members. The individuals on these three teams are M, N, O, P, S, and T. The following is the case. Okay, you stop. You get to the call and you stop. Big picture, right? You're always saying, how, how are they looking me to organize? Uh, is it fair to say that we're assigning team members to teams? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what's complicated about that? Okay. So the only other question you would have is do the teams themselves get ordered? Right? If the teams are first, second, and third, then you're going to order the teams, right? Meaning one function here is you've got to assign members to a team, right? And then the second function would be you actually order the teams themselves. Does that make sense? Now, there may not be. There may not be any order in this, right? I mean, there is because I gave it to you for that reason. But I see this as mostly uh, assignment and, and some order. Okay. And now you, you lay that groundwork, you recognize it, and now you begin with the constraints. Okay, so what are my constraints? S is on the team of G. On, on the team from G. Okay, I'm going to erase this. So, so that's S for Steven? Yes. And S is on Team G, is that right? Correct. Okay. T is on the second place team. Now you see, that's order. That, that second constraint says we want you to order as well to assign. That T is going to be on a second place team. Okay. M and P are not on the same team. That just make it visual. Okay, M and P are not on the same team. Okay, next. Should we underline T? We I, I'm going to, yeah. yeah. Up here, thank you. Yep. No, T, T. T, oh, I didn't underline T. I didn't underline T because I'm underlining things that have to do with assignment, not with order. But, but it would be fine to do that. But my mind is approaching this as this is mostly assigning team members to teams, and then T will end up in second place, because I'll have this over here. But it would, it would be fine. Okay. What's next? P's team places higher than N. Or P's higher than N. Okay, so P, it will underline, P is higher than N. Okay, we'll put T in there. What's next? The team from G places higher than the team from H. That's it. Okay. I just want to keep myself from getting confused here. Okay. So I have all the constraints, yes? Correct. Now what you look at is in our first hypothetical, we were able to trifurcate and then come down to bifurcate, right? In our second hypothetical, they allowed us to work in one universe. You look at these constraints, right? And you say, can you see how we create hypotheticals that allow us to uh, organize and manage information? And I would look at it, look at each rule, right? To say that 
S is on, because they said there were three teams. They're what? F, G, and H? Yes. Okay. And there are two members to each team. So that's pretty straightforward, right? You just drop in six into six. You look at the first constraint, and the only thing with two lines on it is P, and it says P is above N. Well, that is important. If P is a higher place team than N, is it fair to say that P could be on the first or the second place team? Yes. Yes. Is it fair to say N can be on the second or the third place team? Yes. And in fact, isn't it fair to say there are three possibilities? That you look at this, could you have P1, N2? Yes. Mm -hmm. Could you have P1, N3? Yes. Could you have P2, N3? So couldn't you trifurcate on that? Yeah. Oh. Oh. But now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. If you can trifurcate on a team member, right? Could you trifurcate on the team? If team G, doesn't team G have the same relationship to team H that team member P has to team member N? Yes. Yeah. yeah? And when you when you organize by the team, don't you control two slots? Yes. Right? But when you organize by the team member, you only control one slot. You see it. So I'm not saying it's a mistake to organize on this. You gotta go home and practice all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go home. That's it's it's practicing, organizing, managing. My mind says, you know what? Does everybody see three universes? Oh, okay. So I'm gonna do the three universes on the position of the teams. And then this information, then I can put T right in there, right? Because I'm going to have the positions of the team, and T's always on the second place team. Right. So I'm looking at this saying, all right. Okay, G is above H, so that's one hypothetical where G is above H. Over here I'll have uh, G H F, that's the second hypothetical. And then the third hypothetical would be G F H. Does everybody see what I've done and understand why I've done it? Yes. yes. You guys see it? Talk to me. Yes. Isn't it kind of cool? I mean, now you have an organizational framework in which to put the information in, right? So now I know that T's on the second place team. There's T. There's T. There's T. I don't care about T anymore. Can we put S? S is on team G. Yeah, we just one at a time, right? S is on, everybody agree S is on team G? <laughs> So we had six variables to control. We're now down to four. Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. And that's what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to organize so that not all the walls are up in the air. Okay. So that's done. That's done. Now, I have these three remaining. That's done. G and H are done, right? So there's really only two constraints I haven't applied, right? Which is MP. So I'll put them up here. I've got to apply that M is not with P. And I've got to apply that P is above N. Okay. So that's one constraint. And the second constraint is this. Okay. And now you organize until you say, you know what, I'm going to have to manage. But is it fair to say, again, when you get into this, typically they let you make a lot of progress. In one hypothetical, they let you make some progress in another, and then not a whole lot in the third. So my eye comes over here. Is it fair to say, you see what's left, right? That's it. There's nothing else. Uh, o, right? There are no limits on O? Yep. No. So we'll bring O over. First hypothetical. What team does P have to be on? Uh, what team does N have to be on? H. You guys see it? So here's P, here's N, 
And who cannot be with P? M. And so where is M? Gabish? So they're not going to let you do that across the board. You with me? Again, it's going to vary. Some hypotheticals, right? They're going to really allow you to organize. Some hypotheticals, they're going to require you to manage, just to manage. So, um, so now over here, again, don't try to, you know what I'm saying, be willing to, you can make up in managing what you didn't meticulously organize. So, you know, you don't, it, it's better to get everything, but, but I wouldn't go nuts over this. I look at this, and if I look at this second hypothetical, you see how it's P, N, and then I have to deal with O and M? So that's all you do. If, like, if you look at this, right, you could see P, N, yes? Yeah. And it's the same over here. You could see P, N. Don't, you don't have to try to do anything more, right? Yeah. O could be anywhere, right? And then your only constraint is wherever I put P, I can't put M. So I'm done. And it's a judgment call. Just like trying a case is a judgment call. Putting a witness on the stand is a judgment call. Parti following a particular trial strategy is a judgment call. So what do you think you're going to have to make on this test? Just a judgment call. You bet. So, again, what I would look for here is do you see anything? I don't have any. Just if, if somebody says, you know, what must be true. Right? Anybody have a little one that looks like it's okay there? Well, what's the first question? Well, the first question is probably the rules question, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't care about that. What's the one immediately yeah, underneath 21 that? 21 says exactly. So could that be and must be true? Well, what does it say? If, have a, if P and T are teammates, then for how many of the individuals can it be exactly determined where his or her team places? Okay, it's probably not my favorite question, but let's do it. <laughs> if, well, because again, it's, it's the issue they telescope on the issues, things that are straightforward by saying if S is assigned to team H, which is fine, must be true. If when they have that, that's it. If they have that and it says could be true, that's fine as well. Oh. Um, but it's fine. Which one did, what is this, which one did you pick? Um, if P and T are teammates, um, then for how many of the individuals Can you start again? Yeah, if P and if T. If P and T are teammates, uh -huh. then for how many of the individuals can it be exactly determined where his or her team places? Okay. Well, if P and T are teammates, mm -hmm. you're alive in uh, two universes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you would know that wherever P is, N's got to be beneath it. Yeah. All right? Everybody agree? Yeah. Yes. Take one step at a time. Okay. So N's got to be down here. And it's got to be down here, so we know that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you look up here and you say, well, that leaves us with O and with M. And that could be anywhere. That could be OM, that could be OM, that could be OM, that could be OM, right? So how many do we know? Four. We know four, right? Is that an answer choice? Yeah. That's the answer. <coughs> do you see it? Talk to me. Yes. Yeah. No. No. No? We have no's? Yeah. Well, is it just... Well, read now, or Lenny, read the question. But if P and T are... Read it out loud. If P and T are teammates, then for how many of the individuals can it be exactly determined what his and her team places? Yeah. So are we just counting the ones we wrote in? No, but that's not what the issue is. The issue is if P and T are on its language, it is its language. If P and T, uh, T are on the same team, for exactly how many people do we know what team they're on, basically, right? Okay. Four. And it's the language. It's you're not being accustomed to use language this way. And it's, and, but you see it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's I, what I meant. I just didn't word it right when I said my Yeah. Answer. But, you know, habits are called habits for a reason. Habits are difficult to acquire, and once acquired, are hard to lose. You have a habit 
of being casual. It's the nature of life. You don't, you know, I have a habit of not being casual because, well, I've been doing this since Reagan was president. You can just change your habit. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't, you know, you, you just have to keep casual. Can we do tw um, 20? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's, well, you try. Number 20? Well, let me erase this. Does everybody okay with this? And then I do want to move to one, one, one other uh, construct. Okay. What does number 20 say? Sure. If O'Rourke is on the second place team, then which one of the following could be true? Okay, so concrete piece of information, right? O'Rourke is on the second place team, so we're not, you see how the, this is not valid, we're not here, right? We're here, we're here. The issue is could be true. So you want to keep that, it's not must be true, it's could be true, right? Okay, well, so I go over here, and in this universe, I know where P and N are. And since I know where P and N are, then I'd spring down the M. Everybody agree? Yeah. How long would this take? And you go over here. Oh, frisky. It's the same thing. Right? Yeah, oh, okay. P and M. Could be true. Everything there must be true, except the letters of the team and the placements. So you just look, and the answer is going to be it could be true that F is the third place team. It could be true that F is the second place team. It could be, you know, it's going to be the team. So wh where's our answer? Come on, come on, somebody yell out the answer. I don't know. I'm not looking at the exams. Is on team what? B. B. Well, what does it say? N is on the team out of Fairview. Yeah, that could be true. N is on the team from Fairview. It doesn't have to be true. It could be true. Yes? Yeah. Talk to me. So it's First possible could be true. You can just keep going. Like, don't look at the next one. Uh, so long as only one of the answer choices, in other words, it, 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 yes, and it could be true. Yes, and it could be true. If it can be true in one universe, then that's that's fine. That's the end of it. Must be true. You might have to check both universes. Okay. I got I got to move on to the next one. Okay. So, because like, we we need to set up more. And. All right. Is this beginning to make the case that this way of organizing and managing may reflect the way it's actually being done while it's being made? That, that this, the people who write the test may be doing something like this. This is like a complex version of Sudoku. Yes. <laughs> That's all this is. More elements and more components. Well. Yes. If that's the case, then that mimics law. Sudoku? No. If that's the case, that this is a more complex Oh, do not play Sudoku? No. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like a box of nine with the numbers no. one through no. nine no. and you fill in. I, I, insofar that to solve that, you would have to organize and manage? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Well, then that is analogous to this. I don't think I would use Iraq on that, though. So. All right. Pardon me? And our last hypothetical. So we have gone from straight order to order with some assignment to assignment with some order to what will now be just plain assignment. And for that, I know you've been anxiously waiting. Exam 55. Section four. Which exam? 55. Questions one through six. Chessie, would you mind reading this? There are exactly six law students. G, L, M, R. I'm sorry, G for George. G for George, L for Larry, M, Mary, R, 
Sam Victor in a trial advocacy class. The class is divided into three trial teams, team one, team two, and team three, of exactly two students each. Each student is on exactly one of the teams. Each student prepares exactly one of either the opening argument or the final argument for his or her team. The teams must be formed according to the following specifications. Okay, so then you stop. Seems an awful lot like the one we just did, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the question you then ask yourself now is, are these teams going to be ordered? If they're not going to be ordered, then you're just pure, purely assigning members to a team. And we have a, you know, a variable, right? That they've got to give an opening or a final statement. Chessie, did it say that each team, somebody gives an opening and a final? Yeah. Yeah, it says each student prepares exactly one of either the opening argument or the final argument. Okay, and so that's, that tells me that this, there's going to be, oh, if I would be careful, I don't know that they'll do anything with it. I think everybody would incline to put O to the left and F to the right, because you're thinking that's how it would work. It does not be that way. You know, if they do do this, it, nobody has said to you, the opening statement is given before the final statement. Kabish? And until I am told that, I do not know that. Okay, so now I'm just looking for, do they want me to order? If they don't want me to order, it's going to be straight assignment. So what do we got here? M is on the same team as either G or V. MG or MV. So M is restricted, because M is common to both of these. So M I'm going to underline. G and V, I'm going to put an asterisk over them. Because one of them is restricted, but I don't know which one. Okay, what's that? L prepares an opening argument. Okay. Either G or R, but not both, prepares a final argument. So the way I've written that up, is there anything else? That's it. Okay, so we have no information on S. All I'm doing that last one is it just says they can't give the same, you know, if, if, if when one gives an opening, one's given, the other's given a final. When, when one's given a final, the other's given the opening. So all that's saying to me is, all right, you know, you're just doing different things. Okay. And now here's where you look for, can I bifurcate or trifurcate? So... You could definitely do O. You know that O has got to give an opening statement, and you could put O on team one or team two or team three. You could do that. What else could you do? What about this? In one universe, doesn't that mean M and G constitute a full team? Yes. And in the other universe, doesn't that mean M and V constitute? Now, I don't know if they're giving the opening or the final statement, right? But didn't you just fill a whole team? Yeah. Don't you? Doesn't that feel similar to Team G finishes in a position above Team H? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then once we put those two people on teams, don't we place O on a different team? Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Because we know O is giving an opening statement. We have to be on a different team. So it's seeing what's not there. Right, just saying. L, there is no L, I'm sorry. L, L giving an opening, yeah. 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 So, it makes it a little bit neater. And there was no order to these teams, notwithstanding that they called them Team 1, Team 2, Team 3. Nobody came in first year. So, I'm seeing this. We'll call this Team 1. Everybody agree it's got to be MG or MV? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm going to get 
L, the opening, it doesn't matter what team we put them on, does it? Which means this has to be a final. And over here, this team for eight. And now I'm going to put down, so who do I have to control? Uh, is it fair to say that this constraint is now represented? Yes. Everybody agree? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say this constraint is now represented? Yes. yes. Is it fair to say the only thing left is that G and R give different opening and closings? Mm -hmm. And that S is not, that, so in other words, look up here and say, all right, these three spaces, right, we need to control the information for. Would it be fair to say we have information about G in that top hypothetical, but we don't have any, any information about V. You see here we have information about G, right? Yes. But not V. So isn't it fair to say in this top hypothetical there are no limits on V? Yes. So you take V, you die. Or you want to put it over side, that's fine. Take V. Okay. And, uh, and then I have R, right? I got to deal with R in this top hypothetical, and I'm going to have to deal with S in the top hypothetical. So S can also go anywhere. And all I have to remember here is that the R is going to give a different statement than the G. Do you guys see it? So this is the management part, right? That's organizing. Now you come down here and say, well, when I have information about V here, I don't have information about G here. So down here, you have G, R, and S that you have to deal with. And here you have G, R. And S. And that's it. You're going to manage that information. Um, Could you put the arc by the end of the G and the end of the V? I'm sorry? So that they're interchangeable? Yeah, what that's saying to me, Jill, is that with respect to the G and the R uh, in, in both universes, but in that bottom one, that it's just reminding me that if R gives an opening, G gives a final, mm -hmm. and if uh, G gives an opening, R gives a final. Does that make sense? So now, you look for an entry question. So anybody see any entry question there? The, the, how about question? What does question four say? You got to yell at me, Leslie. <coughs> if R is on the same team as V, then for exactly how many of the students can it be determined which of the arguments he or she prepares? So, is it fair to say they want me to put R on the same team as V? Yes. Mm -hmm. And is it fair to say that can only take place in the top the hypothetical? Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody see it? So what you do is that I'm going to put R on the same team with V. That tells you the S is unaccounted for. Tells you the S has got to be here. And then what does it want? To then it says what? Uh, for exactly how many of the students can it be determined which of the arguments he or she prepares? Two. L and S. That could be an opening or a final. Since that could be an opening or a final, that could be an opening or a final. Opening final, I don't know what's why. So in terms of how many do I know? Two. Does this solve? Talk to you. You're no good to me, dull. You're no good to you, dull. And you get, now as we hit the four hour mark in here, that's what's going to happen on your test if you're not prepared for it. You with me? Yes. yes. What you want to do is go in there, I want you to practice yawning. <laughs> <laughs> it's flu season, other people will catch it. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was four. What's, what does five say? Just, Curious. If L is on the same team as R, 
and which one of the following must be true. Oh, I like that, because it's a must be true. They want L on the same team with R, right? Now, you see how that's in both hypotheticals? Yeah. Hang on. Okay. So, uh, now once we know R, gosh, don't we know G? Yes. yes. And doesn't that mean that G's giving an opening statement? Yes. yes. And doesn't that have to be true? You don't think they made that an answer choice, do you? Did they? Yes. Yes. Leslie, what's with this? I mean, Leslie says, yeah, and then the hands come out. Why? What did I do? <laughs> do you see what they want? That is the answer, right? Yes. Okay. My goal here was to introduce you and give you some evidence that there is a method to organizing this information that if applied consistently, right, it will yield valid outcomes. That there aren't 27 different mysterious games on this thing. There are systematic ways to organize this information, right, and then requiring you to manage what you've organized. Do you get that this is the law? Yeah. Right, that's what this is serving in. This is serving as the law, right? and that the individual questions are the issues you apply to the law. Would it be fair to say that those, those, just those two questions we did did not require much analysis? Yes. But isn't that outcome, that it didn't require much analysis, predicated on we had the law? Yes. Yeah. So would you agree with me, it's in your interest to practice developing the law? Yes. And how do I do that for you? It's a great test. I can't. I absolutely can't. I absolutely can't. I can't. You can't share a brain.